I should gatekeep this, but I'm not gonna. I added some new Arabian fragrances to my collection and they're incredible and they're worth a conversation. So I'm about to put you on game. These new Arabian fragrances that I've been wearing down for the last couple of months that are completely rocking my world. They're affordable, they're beautiful, they're dynamic, and they don't get nearly enough hype. And I'm obsessed. So we're about to talk about it. New fragrances in my collection. I have a haul for y'all. I have a haul for you. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, if you just like saving money, if you just like talking about fragrances, stick around. You know you know better, but you just can't get enough. And welcome to my haul video. I'm excited you're here and I hope you enjoy the video to come. If you haven't done so already, subscribe. I would appreciate it. So in today's video, we have nine Arabian fragrances from houses like Latafa, Ardal Zafran, we have Swiss Arabian, Al Harmain, among others. And we're about to get into all of that because we have so many different types here that deserve a little bit of love and attention from me, at least on screen, because I've been giving them a lot of love behind closed doors. So let's get started started with our first fragrance and again subscribe if you haven't already done so the first fragrance i picked up and fell in love immediately was latafa's Badi al oud sublime or sublime for short i saw oud in the name and i thought absolutely fucking not i'm not going to do it it's going to be disgusting but a comment from jennifer who always be putting me on game she's in my comment section she's amazing was like you're gonna love it because you love kale eating juicy apple and she's like it lasts longer and it's just as good and i was like excuse me I have no choice but to get this now. Excuse me. And she's right. It really does smell like a woodier version of Kiala's Eating Juicy Apple and it lasts longer. It's so good. Now let's get into it. It does smell like the notes on Fragrance Guy don't. It don't. The notes on there gave fresher, crisper, more citrusy than it actually is. Like the notes on there say something like green apple and lychee, rose, jasmine, vanilla, moss, and some other things. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, all those things sound good, but it don't smell like this. What does this smell like? It smells like a candied red apple. Very juicy, very heavy, very thick, very much like Hale is eating juicy apple. Very, very sweet. The jasmine does come through, but it's not like a soapy spa-like jasmine. It's more like a fresher, crisper jasmine. It's a little air of it, just a little bit of it. And in the base, not the base they say makes sense. The vanilla, sure, but the moss and the patchouli, I don't get that at all. What I get is a really heavy, darker wood. Something like cedar, maybe. I would almost say vetiver because there's a little bit of a smoky quality about the base. But it isn't as dry as vetiver usually shows up. So I want to say something close to cedar. Something kind of heavy and woody. But it sits in the back. When you first smell it and you wear it over top of everything is that very candy red apple sweetness that is so addictive and so wonderful and that extra woodiness in the base just kind of adds and elevates the whole thing to make it seem more complex and less playful so i was considering getting dama bianca and all of you in my comment section over on tiktok you should follow me over on tiktok kept saying to me just get the dupe get janoon noir instead of getting dama bianca and i thought yeah if it's less expensive if it's just as good we gonna get the dupe I'm here to tell you, you could have both. They're different enough. I've been testing, uh, I went and got a sample of Dama Bianca as well because I wanted to test them next to each other. And uh, you could get both. They're different. They're, they're, they're different. I'm not saying I'm going to get both, probably. I'm probably going to get both. Anyway, let's talk about this one. So this is uh, supposed to be a dupe of Georgiev's Dama Bianca, which is supposed to be this spicier vanilla fragrance that mixes in some citrusy elements. It's all supposed to be heavily powdery with a lot of iris and violet and orange, just overkill on the powderiness. And that's absolutely the case here. There is a note in here though, that people had said it turns on some people's skin and I totally understand what they're, they mean. I don't know if it's turning. I think what is in here, it has a type of vegetal smell like you would get from cauliflower or uh, mushrooms. This, this kind of like, not dirtiness, but there is this kind of savoriness and earthiness about it at the very base of this fragrance that might be slightly off-putting to some people. It's not, Lyra right, Lyra was, uh, smells like a cake. It's a, it's a lemon, vanilla, 
beautiful fluffy cake it's it's delicious the introduction of those vegetal elements to this as jerv jerv jerv, jerv sometimes does like they introduce these left field elements to straightforward fragrances and you're like what the fuck just happened it happens a lot with their fragrances and this does that but it does it slightly different from the original the original introduces these cereal notes like ambre so it's like it smells almost not like not, not like, like snap, snap crackle pop the <laughs> rice crispy like that like, like kind of smell is introduced in the other one and it's not nearly as powdery and the kumquat in that one isn't as sharply sweet so it's a little bit fresher and i think it's a more sophisticated and elevated and more mature fragrance because some of the sweetness and some of the sharper dimensions are ironed out and don't push as hard now in a lot of videos i've said i want you to go home or go hard and i usually prefer a fragrance that pushes the boundaries a lot more that fragrance is far more subtle in terms of what it's giving than this one but i do think this is very pretty the sweetness is nice from the kumquat the vanilla in here is rich and creamy the powderiness is on overdrive it's on overkill it's a level of powderiness i don't generally wear because it is a lot um and that vegetal sort of smell is something very distinct different and a little bit um it's a little bit of a change right like it's a little bit uh, interesting because it's giving you something you have you don't usually get in this kind of fragrance because you're not usually getting vanilla with vegetables it's just not something that goes together you know in terms of your smell and your expectations but i do think it's beautiful and i understand the hype i understand why people love it but i will say in closing you can have both they're different enough that's what that's my takeaway basically the next fragrance I picked up is this perfume oil from Swiss Arabian called Jamila. I'm pretty sure, because it was on my list at the time, it was in my original Arabian fragrance wishlist video. Um, and I finally picked it up. I don't know what why I held off for as long as I did um, and what I was on the fence about, but I'm glad I got this. It's a lovely perfume oil. I love a good perfume oil to layer with, and this is a good one. So what is this? It's three things, essentially. It is musk, a really heavy, not a clean white musk, a really heavy musk. It's very weighty. Um, there is some cedar, in, no cedar, ebony in here. It's a very dark, rich wood. Like I say in terms of like the woodiness of woods, right? I like liken the vibe of an ebony wood to like coffee. There's something kind of dark and sort of smoky about it maybe a little bit bitter it's very rich it's very dark it has a lot of mystery to our fragrance and we do have that here and then there is a little bit a little bit of green apple and it's mostly marmalade like a cherry or a strawberry marmalade like a very sweet compote fruit compote kind of smell now what is interesting is that usually based on how the fragrance is usually like layered when you smell it you usually get the sweet notes first and then in the back you get the musk and the woods not in this one the first thing you get is the musk it is really heavy as you continue to breathe in you get the wood the darkness and then when the fragrance ends you land on those sweeter elements it reminds me of um, Parfums de Marley's Cassili that does a similar thing where it sort of flips the script in terms of how we experience the fragrance and I do enjoy that. It means then that when you do, when I layer with this fragrance and I put this underneath, and like I said, I'm about to layer more woody fragrances with Idris Apple like this one, that when you lay down a fragrance like this, it's mostly woods that's coming through with the fragrance you layer over top, but then there is this sort of sweetness that lingers in the back and comes through a little bit later and it's really pleasant the next two fragrances i picked up i did so while i was on vacation in las vegas i went perfume shopping as i showed y'all in that vlog video and visited this place called maison dorian and picked up two fragrances while i was there this is the first one i want to give you in the order that i picked them up while i was there so this is the first one i was attracted to not from the bottle or anything just from the note structure i was like i'm gonna like her test it and i absolutely did this is a tuberose fragrance y'all know how i feel about tuberose i dedicated a whole video to tuberose which i will link love her so there's a tuberose fragrance but it's not just tuberose y'all stop stop it's not just tuberose right we got almond in here mm. we got some coffee 
yeah we got some vanilla we got some tonka in here it is all of these really warm supple rich gourmand elements just backed up by tuberose as it should be and it's lovely it is so beautiful it is such a soft sultry feminine fragrance like this is the fragrance you wear on that third date yet you know the date this is the one you wear right it's like i'm not trying to flirt I may be trying to get it in. The ones I picked up from this brand um, was one I almost missed, y'all, because I was walking out of the store and I spied out the corner of my eyes like, I didn't try that one. I didn't try that one. And I rushed back, yes, and I tested it and it was for me. It was for me. I loved her the moment I sprayed her. She is wonderful. Now, this is a vanilla fragrance that is a lot lighter in terms of, in terms of what it is giving it's not really heavy thick vanilla it's this very light airy one let me just tell you what's in here so vanilla right really rich beautiful vanilla that is not texturally heavy then we have all of these lightning elements right we have a little bit of pink pepper light in the fragrance a little bit we have a very light airy jasmine not the really thick uh, or even like the spa like jasmine that is kind of soapy no we have this green kind of fresh kind of jasmine we have slightly sweet lighter orange blossom we have a nice sweet pear in here we have a little bit of coffee we have a little bit of musk the fragrance is like a light airy vanilla fragrance that has a little bit of spice in it it is really lovely it is really easy wear it is a kind of vanilla you throw on you run to get coffee with friends it's nothing that you overthink it's an everyday vanilla fragrance that is absolutely lovely y'all get into my new work perfume boom it's hamsa by swiss arabian i don't know what i was waiting on i don't know what i was waiting for i've been eyeing this fragrance before most of the most of the arabian fragrances in my collection i've been eyeing this one here's the thing it's tuberose and orange blossom with honey you hear me you hear me it is tuberose with orange blossom and honey you see those things together you're like jenny that's you that's you it is and i said you know what I need to do a little something different. I don't need to keep getting the same thing over and over. How many tuberose fragrances can you have? One more. That's the answer. One more because it's nice. What is this? It's what I said. It's tuberose. Mm. It's tuberose with orange blossom, honey, and a little bit of vetiver. Now, y'all, I've been talking to you about how I love a little bit of a smoky base. Give me Laundry D Rouge from Givenchy or Givenchy's Hot Couture EDP or EDT. Give me a smoky base. Give me the body, the fullness, the darkness, the mystery. And you know what we get here? We get both. We get both. This is the fragrance I want to wear to the office when I'm giving a big presentation. And I want to be like, check yourself. I'm the expert here. This is the energy this gives. I am the expert here. It is lovely. It is feminine yet powerful at the same time. This is so fire. I am one wanting to kick myself for talking myself out of it because I thought you need variety. Who the fuck needs variety when you can't have two burrows? That is the question. It's lovely. Finding our have fragrances in Canada is a motherfucking challenge. However, mm, Glam Petals over on TikTok, I'll link her TikTok. I'll, you know, put in a thing here <laughs> of her TikTok if you want to follow her. She does reviews on fragrances as well. She put me on game and she was like, check out this store, Frag Bar. You can find some Our Hub fragrances. And boom, I picked up two. She recommended French Coffee to me. I'm going to talk about getting Choco Musk because fire. We're going to talk about those two. But I will link Frag Bar. I'm not getting no money off of it. Like, I'm not an affiliate or anything. But if you're in Canada and you're having a hard time finding um, Our Hub fragrances and you want to try some of them, sometimes they have some. So I will link their page so you can find it a little bit easier. It's easy to find in the u.s it's on amazon in the u.s it's just not on on um amazon canada anyway let's talk about these two fragrances we're going to start with french coffee i don't give a fuck what the notes say ignore the notes it smells like the name it's french coffee it's it's the, one of the most photorealistic coffee smells in a perfume bottle i've ever smelled it is fucking wild it doesn't just smell like espresso because it smells like espresso it smells like a dark roast right so it's like a dark roast with some sort of cream or milk in it like a heavy cream like half and half right like you're making yourself a latte and it the 
they say it's caramel in here it doesn't smell like caramel it smells like toffee or maybe butterscotch one of the two or a cross between the two it almost smells and i had like a nostalgic moment the moment i smelled it do you remember these old school toffees that like had a brown color to them like it was like a chocolate toffee but it didn't really taste like chocolate it tasted like toffee just slightly different from the like beige looking one and the brown looking one and the caramel looking one yeah that's what this smells like coffee sweetened by creamer that is very specific to like a toffee creamer it is wild like i literally sprayed this and i was like oh it's it, it smells sort of nostalgic like it smells like candy i've eaten it smells like coffee i've drank before it is very good if you love a rich dark coffee smell which i know is not for everybody if you're thinking this is like a libre type coffee you would be wrong this isn't coffee you find in most fragrances this is the coffee you drink but in a bottle you spray onto your body to leave the house so if that is your thing and sometimes it's mine because i love drinking coffee i love talking about coffee i love spraying coffee on my body so thank you to glam petals for putting me on game because mm, this one is beautiful and inexpensive and i've been enjoying her so let's get to the next one which i'm even more excited about then there was Choco Musk. Sometimes you expect, not just sometimes, a lot of the times you expect the hype to be overhyped. Because can this, you know, $20, $30 fragrance be as good as everybody says? No fucking way. And then you smell it and you are like, wow, that is beautiful. This is beautiful. It is vanilla and sponge sugar the notes have all of these complicated things in there there is myrrh and spices and musk and all manner of shit it doesn't matter it's vanilla it's sponge sugar you want to spray your, yourself down to go to bed you want to be cozied up with this shit in bed like you just want to be cocooned in it. you want to spray it on your pillow so you can just just turn over in it it is so comforting. It feels like a hug. There is nothing distracting or pulling or in your face. It's just like this cocooning, airy, happy vanilla smell. That's it. This is the vanilla you wear to bed. I won't even say this is the vanilla you wear to run errands. Like maybe you want more power to it. This is just a you smell. It doesn't have a ton of sillage. It doesn't have a ton. Like people across the street won't smell you. It's not going to linger in a room when you leave. Like it's not making any bold statements. It's just this very soft, sweet, beautiful, dynamic vanilla smell. There's a little bit of chocolate in here. It's a hint of chocolate to give it some dimension and everything else is giving it a little bit of dimension but mostly the sweetness and the vanilla are running ahead of everybody else in terms of the priorities of this fragrance and have y'all been talking about Binturan from Ardal Zafran because you should it is fire it is so it's the best one of all the ones that i've talked about today and how great and beautiful and lovely and affordable and dynamic they are it is the best one in my opinion especially if you are a like a floral lover take one of the sort of popular florals as the base it's tuberose there's white florals in the base we got tuberose i think you have orange blossom maybe some jasmine so we have white florals at the base right Take your classic white florals, like the Prada Paradox, right? Or you take, I mean, any Dolce & Gabbana. Like you take Dolce & Gabbana, Pour Femme, or Givenchy's Irresistible, or Armani My Way, any of these white florals, right? And you add some different elements. So instead of going with fruit, because I love me some fruit in a phrase, but you know, what, you know what they did instead? They went nutty almond, sweet almond, creamy almond. So it's creamy and a little bit sweet and a little bit nutty. It's nice. They've also done a little bit of cacao, a little bit bitter, a little bit dark, rich, beautiful. They've also done a spicy tonka. What can I say? All of those things work well together. Then, mm, out of nowhere, in the base of this fragrance, they call it woody notes. Let me just describe what the woodiness in this fragrance is like. It's dry wood, right? The kind of wood that feels tactile, like you could almost break it. It doesn't feel like soft and creamy like you get with like sandalwood or the sort of rich deepness you get with ebony. It feels dry. It's like almost hay-like. It just feels heavier than hay. It feels like, you know, like if you go into like a woodworker shop and there is 
uh, wood shavings all around you and wood shavings don't really have a smell but it, there's like this non-smell that is a distinct smell right about it that is the base of it like it feels textural it feels like a it, it feels like a good grounding of the fragrance it feels like it adds like this real depth and interest to a kind of combination that you wouldn't expect right so so many of the white florals that i know and love they add musk to the base they may add sandalwood to the base they add creamy full elements that sort of elevate these white florals to make them feel fuller and bigger and this one feels like they've delivered it on a brick truck or something like it feels like a hammer doing the work it just feels really powerful and interesting and different and it's lovely i really enjoy this fragrance so much and i was shocked now here's the thing somebody had commented have you heard of binturan and i was thirsty to go find out what it was all about and i saw the notes it was of course out of stock because it's always out of stock i went and looked at the notes and i thought i mean, it sounds nice i don't think it's going to be like something's gonna rock my world i was wrong i was wrong i say of all the ones that i picked up by a country mile this is my favorite one. So if you love a more layered white floral, if you're out here wearing Prada Paradox because like me, you love that shit and you enjoy it, but you want even more dynamism in the fragrance, even more layers. You want a gourmand twist instead of the fruitier elements. This right here is a whole vibe. This is so good, y'all, and I'm so excited I picked this one up. Which of these do you most want to try? Obviously, Bintu Run is my favorite from Ardell's Afron, just rocking my world, being magical and shit. But maybe your favorite and the one you want to try the most is completely different. Let me know down in the comment section because I want to hear about it. Are we on the same page? Do you love Churros as much as I do? Leave it down in the comment section. I want to hear about it. I'll see you in the next one. Bye, y'all. This is paradise. Can you listen to me?